Uh, thank you so much, Adam, uh, for you, joining us. Um, actually, can you, uh, can it's you hear me well? Yeah, can everybody hear him? Yeah. Can you hear me well? Yeah. yeah. So, to be honest, it's it's a bit selfish of me to even bring you here because I I also wanted to learn a lot from you. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be I'll be honest. Um, so before before you know we get into all the fun stuff of Hologo, teaching tube or everything else we are doing, let let's let's go back in some time, right? Okay. Let's let's talk about uh, your background, right? Where did you grow up? Where did you go school in? How did you how how were you back in the days and so? Um, so I, I was born in the Maldives. I did my uh, education up to grade seven in in Mare. Ahmadiyya Iskandar and uh, Majidiyya school for two years. And then I went to Sri Lanka to do my O, o levels. Okay. Did a diploma in New Zealand and then I did my degree in uh, uh, Geneva. Right. But I didn't finish my degree there. So I was more so interested in enjoying. Oh, 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 <laughs> and but, but, uh, but I made a lot of good friends during my uh, tenure in uh, university in Geneva who've uh, been helping me since then. And I think uh, the biggest takeaway from my experience there would have been the friends that I made and um, people that I've come across. And after that, uh, I decided um, to go and work in Malaysia. What? And there I did um, real estate investment and brokerage uh, for about from 2006 to 2010. And then in 2010, I came back and joined my family business here in the Maldives. All right. So. Uh, could you, could you uh, tell us a little bit about your you know, family business as well, since there are people in the audience yeah, who might so know it? Uh, I'm, my father is, um, has been a businessman for quite some time. And he's been involved in a few, uh, few industries. And the group that he's... Um, founded is called Islanders Group of Companies. And there we have a couple of businesses. Uh, one is real estate development. Then we have an education arm where uh, we brought Bilabong High International School, Kangaroo Kids International School uh, to the Maldives. And that's one of the companies that we are quite invested in, uh, both my brother and myself. And then we have an industrial arm uh, that's to do with timber trading and right, uh, right. water farm trading. And right, right. So multiple industries, yeah? yeah? So the question I have for you is, since you have mentioned a lot of things, you have your, your family business in, involved in real estate, and there's the educational arm, and there are a couple yeah. of other things as well, right? But, but the certain thing we are here to talk about today is uh, Hologo, right? Which is a technological company or a tech yeah. startup. So, how, how did you go into, the, into tech, right? When you were studying, did you study anything related to tech, or how, how did the shift come? Why, why technology? Why, why not anything else? Uh, well, when we were thinking about uh, expanding the education business in the Maldives, um, we were quite passionate about the education company that we've developed that's called Islanders Education. And we began by building schools for at a high fee. That's uh, Bilabong and Kangaroo Kids, so, but we did not want to stop there. We wanted to be able to come up with a product or a solution where every single Maldivians could afford and uh, get benefit from. So then we thought um, we'll cut costs and take uh, Kangaroo Kids schools across the islands, and we tested it out with a school in Addu, we tested it out with a school in Formulak, and then we eventually ended up developing a, our own uh, preschool curriculum that we called IGRA. And we thought uh, parents all across the Maldives in various islands could afford something, you know, to, to at least enough to sustain these schools, but that was not the reality. So, um, but during this work, we've identified that there was a very, very big problem uh, because uh, Maldives has 212 schools and more than half of them have less than uh, 20 students a grade. So that means uh, the Ministry of Education would have had to uh, put a chemistry teacher, physics teacher, business studies teacher, computer science teacher, everybody 
every single Aydan would have had to have a teacher, qualified teacher, which, which was not the case. So a lot of the islands were um, equipped with one teacher who might be teaching English and science at the same time, business and mathematics at the same time. This was not their specialty. But everybody had connectivity. Everybody had internet. Everybody had a smartphone. Everybody had uh, access to computers. So we thought it would be wise and it might be something worthwhile trying to develop an online solution to give education to students across all of the islands in the Maldives. That's when we began work with uh, uh, teaching, teaching tube. tube. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, early uh, 2017, right? If I remember correctly. No, we began working on that in 2000. Well, when ah, I, I mean, yeah. it was launched in early yeah, two, yeah, 2017, yeah. Yes, right? Yes. Along with Dirago, if I remember correctly. Yes, yes. we partnered with Dirago. For yes, that. so it's very interesting because I, I think that's the first time I met you as well. Uh, yes, you, you, you are helped working me in develop the mobile app. Ah, yeah. Right, right. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. So I, I, the, the first thing which came to my mind was because you were trying to develop an online platform with uh, educational content, right? So the, the initial thought I had was, I mean, there are, there are so many platforms out there, right? I mean, I, I'm pretty sure so many people would have asked you this question. There's Han Academy, there's so many, so many online platforms out there, right? So wh why did you think you can create something on your own? I mean, why did you decide to create something on your own? Well, there, there was Han Academy. There were uh, there was solutions like um, RoboMate, right. Baiju's, but there was nothing specific to the Cambridge IGCSC curriculum that was being taught in Maldives. Right. And um, there might be various, I mean, the, the internet is full of information, but it was not sorted and customized to the Cambridge IGCSE system. And I've hunted around to have a look and see if there were any solutions. There was a couple of solutions that were customized, but those were really, really expensive. And that's when I thought uh, that we'll work out, um, we'll gather a team of uh, qualified teachers. So I got, I convinced um, an author of one of, a very renowned author who spent a lot of years in Maldives teaching as well. And then a very good mathematics teacher and started off with the science and math subjects first. And then we spent together two years to develop content together with them. And when we were developing content, we looked at the other platforms. And then when I was going through that, along with a few mm -hmm. students, they, their attention span just uh, went when they were looking at the videos. Mm -hmm. And what we found out was most of the videos were developed with just a singular PowerPoint slide. And then on top of the PowerPoint slide, there'll just be narration. So it, it ended, all of the videos ended up becoming very, very sleepy, you know? Yeah. And uh, that's when we decided we will stick to two methods. We'll stick to the traditional old fashioned Blackboard, Han Academy style, you know, uh, chalk and talk type of uh, videos. And then we got a team of um, graphics designers and uh, 3D artists to come on board and uh, develop 3D models to teach um, science subjects. And that's how we sort of differentiated ourselves. Right. And uh, then we yeah, developed so all that, the Yeah, so that, that's where you found out the problem, right? Because, yeah. th because there are so many platforms out there online, uh, but the content they, are, they, they have is not tailored to our market, right? Yeah. Not to here. So it doesn't, it, it, it doesn't give the best output, right? Yeah. So that's where you identify the problem. And after two or three years of developing the content, you finally launched a platform called Teaching Tube, which was available both on online and a website as well, if I remember correctly. Yeah. So finally, uh, when you launched the website, uh, what, what was the reaction? I mean, what, did you get the outcome you were expecting? What no. were the challenges you faced? I mean, uh, I thought when I launched the website that I'd be selling um, it was at the end of the day a business as well. It, it, would, it was a social, uh, right. social, it was social entrepreneurship perhaps. Right. You know? right. That, right. That's, that might be the best term for it. So I thought that in Mali, kids were paying 
uh, parents were paying kids to get tutored uh, 3,500 rupiah per month, and tu tuition teachers would come three times a week, and then uh, they'd, be, uh, they'd be getting their uh, private tutoring. And in the islands, parents were paying 350 rupiah upwards. So we are talking about 3,500 rupiah um, annually that parents would spend on a subject. So I wanted to give them the best uh, solution from top teachers for less than 50% of that price. What so, they're paying right now. So I priced each subject for $99. And the, prob the outcome that I faced was none of them knew or none of them were familiar with online learning, number one. Number two, uh, a lot of them were, uh, un they were quite unfamiliar to paying for services like this online. That was the story of Maldives. Yeah. And number three, we could not figure out how we will work with the Ministry of Education here also since it was completely new. And uh, that, that way we, we didn't know how to approach the schools, enter into the schools and go and promote a product that is uh, $99. Know. And lastly, we did not know that what the reactions from the tuition teachers who were earning a lot would be if we came up with a solution, perhaps maybe that will, yeah. that may replace sort of uh, their, their, their jobs. Yeah. Uh, so these were the problems that we faced uh, when we launched. So that's, and yeah. Yeah, so so a couple of things I noticed. I mean, even even for any startups, people who are doing startups over here, one thing is uh, something we say out loud very proudly is that Maldives is a very high tech country, which is which is true. We have the most highest penetration internet penetration rate in the Asia, uh, but sometimes even though everybody owns a smartphone, when we do actually start a business based on that, they don't really get the most out of it, right? I mean, I mean, it's changing. It's yeah. changing now, but, yeah. but it's not as much as we are expecting. So the point here being is uh, we, we could be wrong, right? We, we could have so much higher expectation, and so it, at the end of the day, it could be completely other way around, right? And the, uh, and the other, other one you mentioned as well is, I think, that we are, a conversation we are seeing globally, which is one is artificial intelligence replacing human jobs. I'm, I'm sort of remotely closer to that. Now, you are coming up with an online tuition teacher which would replace the traditional tuition teacher, right? And even... Uh, a, a, we, we, that was not our intention. We wanted, intention, yeah. but, but sort of it leads to it, right? Even yeah. e That even was the public perception, you know? True. Even yeah. when Airbnb came out, yeah. that their goal wasn't, you know, to change the whole... Uh, these hotels, right? But, but the way the world is changing, the world is transforming, the people actually do prefer, actually millennials do prefer Airbnbs than rather than hotels, right? So, so somewhat like that. It might not be their perception, but we, we don't really know how the world is changing, right? So, so and then once Teaching Tube was launched, after a while, I mean, I saw something called Hologo, right? And my first reaction was, uh, what is he up to now? Just a few months ago, he had something called Teaching Tube. What is this guy up to now? So could you tell me, uh, obviously, you had a lot of challenges with Teaching Tube. I mean, I think some of the other challenges I think you may have faced is uh, the connectivity also could be somewhat a challenge. I mean, um, so. How, how did that shift happen? You know, obviously, people weren't willing to pay $99 or mm -hmm. did, they didn't know how to pay $99 per year. I think the payment method you had was PayPal, yeah. which also, I think was you set up nightmare. a bank account somewhere else because yeah. we, we don't receive PayPal money to this country, right? Mm -hmm. So you found a hack. You had uh, a bank account somewhere else which received the money from PayPal, right? Yeah. So, so many challenges. People didn't know how to pay, and so many things. So how did it lead to Hologo? I mean, what is the actually, so, what are we missing from there? So num num number one, we put in a lot of work, right? So that's, I'm talking about three years of work, developing content, developing website. We did the website twice, because we figured out the first uh, website we did was in the wrong language that Just we could to be explain. clear, it's not my no, problem. You came at the right, right time, don't worry. <laughs> and. Uh, uh, after that, uh, after that, we thought, okay, the conversions are very slow, you know. So I thought, okay, let's forget about the payment. We put in um, a function where everybody can get a free trial for seven days, 
And after that, uh, we thought, we'll, we'll test that method out. And then we opened up the platform to be tested for free. To the uh, whole world, right? To the whole world. It's on the, it's a dot .com, so anybody can see. Right. And um, then what we started doing was anybody who was registering, we reached out to them via mobile and uh, through email. And if it was helpful for them, we wanted to collect data on how useful it became to them. So we were manually giving them free enrollments. And that was for the Maldives. And eventually, when we started doing that, that was on um, May, late May, June 2017. From that point until August, uh, and when August ended and September began, we had gone from 100 enrollments to 41,000 enrollments. And Is it local or both international? Most, 95% 90, of them came from abroad. And from 63 countries, people were uh, actively engaging within the website. And that's when we realized that, okay, now, now we started looking at, okay, what are the, we hosted the videos on Vimeo. So we got a lot of data on what sort of videos people are watching. And we came to the realization that almost the top 100 videos that we had out of a library of 2,000 videos were lessons that had 3D objects in it. And most of them were biology and physics lessons. And then we thought we had all developed all the 3D models. And um, we, we, we wanted to test if we can go Right. Take a, it up a notch further. Right, right, right. So, so basically, uh, based on data, you know that people were going were going for lessons with 3D object, right? No, yeah. the, they 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 will open chalk yeah. and talk, also, but they never finish it. Right, right, right. But so if it was a 3D lesson, they always they finish, finish it. They found that yeah. interesting, right? And they replay it as right, well. Right, right. You know? And and uh, based on the conversation we had the other day, and if I remember correctly, um, um, this was even before. Or the augmented reality thing became the conversation, right? AR kit wasn't launched, yeah. and this was some time before that, right? So, uh, what did you do next? So you you know that now you have people are watching in 3D object. What was your next step? I mean, so I, I, when I launched Teaching Tube, the the one thing that I really wanted to do was be able to uh, holographically have teachers teaching across <laughs> all islands, you know? And that was something that I really wanted to do. I knew the technology was not there, but I, that's something that I thought would be a game changer. So uh, then AR Kit, the story of AR Kit began to come up during uh, August and Septem September 24th was when AR Kit was actually launched by Apple. And they released information about that a month earlier. So then uh, the technology team that we had in-house, led by Shamhil, and um, all of the 3D designers, the educators, we got together and we thought we'll uh, create a demo 3D AR application. And we took the most popular uh, lesson that was there in the, on Teaching Tube, which is the lesson to do with the human heart. So we took that 3D model. We took a couple of other 3D models, geography, we took the model of the Earth, and we selected five. And we made an uh, AR application, and it was just sitting in the office, but uh, luck played a role, and uh, a gentleman named Chohan, who is an Apple Distinguished Educator, and he actually has uh, one of the two licenses to train Apple schools and Apple educators in the UK. So he came to the Maldives to give a teacher training seminar that was organized by Billabong School. And uh, wh while he was there, I, th I thought maybe it would be a good idea to show him, but I, I'm not sure whether I'd really show him because it's not complete. Maybe I thought UK guys would have much more advanced stuff than us. But the moment I showed that to him, I knew from his face that he's never seen something like this before, you know. And uh, then he, he started getting really excited and uh, he was asking us more questions about what we were planning on doing with this. 
and we we told him yeah we are going to develop uh, thousands of these you know and then he's like can you all do it you know and we knew we can do it and he said okay can you come to the uk and present this to uh, all the apple uh, distinguished schools apple distinguished schools are schools that have an ipad for every kid so that's how you get the label and all the teachers are certified by apple so he's hosted a seminar of um, of training on how to use technologies that are available on ipads to all of the ads schools in uk and we got 30 minutes to showcase what we have developed and at that time it was crashing and you know how it is yeah so, <laughs> and um, we thought okay we'll really get something that works together and we flew to uk oh, right. and uh, they were it was a big function all the schools were there Chauhan was giving presentations on various applications that they use. There were really cool stuff like, you know, they, were, they had education to do with drones and all this stuff. And people were quite engaged. And we, it was our turn quite uh, at around 3 o'clock towards the end. And the moment we demoed it, we played, I played it on, um, on an, uh, Apple TV. The moment we played it, that's when I knew that nobody there has even seen something like this, you know. And and just and to be clear, we are we are not talking about something very revolutionary here, right? Just to, no. you, you just saw some technology which yeah. was just released, and you experiment on it, yeah. right? If I remember correctly, yeah. and like you said, it was, it was available it, to everybody. It was available yeah. to everybody. Everybody had the same opportunity, yeah. and and then like you said, it was crashing, not even working properly. But but <laughs> why why did you even? Why did you go? I mean, I think a lot of people would, would yeah, feel... Because he would invited and it was an opportunity to meet all the Apple right, right. distinguished schools. And then, yeah. But your application is not just finished. It's crashing and you are going to UK to... You luckily, know, it didn't crash in the did. <laughs> So, So, <laughs> luck is there. But still, I, I, uh, the reason why I'm asking this is because we have this sense of insecurity in us, right? The, yeah. the feeling of not being good enough, that our people might laugh at us, our ideas might be stupid. So... And, and you, I think you are not somebody who's coming from a technological background as well, right? Yeah. So, so but still, why, why did you go all the way? I mean, didn't you even think twice that this, this might fail? Yeah, the thought of a little Indian man going and doing an AR presentation to all the Apple distinguished schools, it was a little scary. I had not given a presentation like that before, but I had my brother with me. I had Shamil who was a CTO right, right. with me. So in case it crashed also, he was there with me, so I didn't have to call, you know, right, so three right. of us went. And uh, luckily it didn't crash, but to, to our luck, the head of Apple education for UK, Ireland and Wales was sitting there, we did not even know. And uh, that was two days after Apple launched ARKit. Right. And the moment we finished, him and another guy who was in charge of um, Asia and uh, Middle East, they came over and they started inquiring about us. And that's when we really realized, okay, we have the capacity to do this. We need to sort of figure out how we will present the application. We need to figure out, you know, what more we can put in that may perhaps uh, make us stand out from the rest. There were two other applications, but those are very general. You might know Jigspace. Yes. So they they have uh, they have th this is an AR application where you just see models. All right. But then we thought we will show the models. We will put audio uh, on top of the models where a teacher will talk about whatever concept that we were showing in AR. Does everybody know what AR is? By the way, show of hands, maybe. So friends who have heard of AR, yeah. or augmented reality, I think. Uh, okay, <laughs> for those of you who may not know, right? That's the concept of uh, overlaying uh, digital objects through the camera, right? So we wanted to show uh, digital, like Snapchat, you know. We wanted to show that object. We wanted the ability for the user to get information from teachers talking about that object. And then we also wanted the ability for whoever who is using as an educator 
to be able to record their own voice and make their own rendition of that uh, object and that lesson. So basically, if I am a biology teacher, I don't download the application, I open up the human lungs, and then I will be able to voice it in my own language, in my own standard of teaching. If I was a primary teacher, I'll talk about it a little bit less. If I was a O-level teacher, I'll talk about it a little bit more. If I was an A-level teacher, a little bit more, you know, and in my own language. So that way, the problem we had with teaching to you, where teachers were fearing it will become something that will replace them, this will become something that the teachers will use as a tool to do what they do better, you know. So that's the logic we uh, came up with to launch Hologo. Right. And to support all of the AR content that we have, we already had a massive library of um, video lessons that yeah. can uh, right. complement. So, so you sort that. of pivoted, right? You had a lot of video content, and then since it didn't work out for some reason, you thought yeah. of, okay, I have this chunk of data with me, content yeah. with me, so how, how could I use this rather than starting all again, right? If yeah. right? And that is something a lot of startups tend to do, because they might go out there, and it might not work out, and they are always ready to pivot, right? So something similar you have done. And um, so you came back, right? Came back, and I think if I remember correctly, uh, the, the uh, application was launched earlier this year in Middle East at BAT conference. Yeah. So uh, how did it go? How did it lead there? So um, we knew that in Maldives, not every student will have access to iPads and also iPads and iPhones that were supporting AR kit. Right. So that's generation 6S and beyond. So if we were to put a massive effort and launch here, maybe it would be, uh, may maybe we might not get the numbers that we desire. Right. And also we had at that point developed this relationship with Apple. These guys were regularly emailing us, asking us what's going on. And uh, that's when we thought, okay, closest to where we are, we need to figure out um, the best education uh, convention that's there. So actually the best, biggest education convention is called BET. Uh, and they have a, their main uh, summit in January in UK. Then they have their offshoot summits in Middle East, Asia, and then Latin America. And we thought that Middle East would be a good choice because uh, it was in UAE. There the education, international schooling system is quite strong. They have the spending power, and a uh, lot of the schools from Bahrain, Saudi Arabia, um, and uh, Qatar, at that time they were not quarreling, I think, uh, can come and, um, and see the solution. So we co-sponsored that uh, event, right. and went there, so they gave us a booth, and we were able to give two speeches about how to use this technology. So. And we got a good so, reception. Yeah. So, so basically, you found a hack to go into the place and demonstrate, right? You said you became a co-sponsor, and then yeah, they'll yeah. give you a slot, right? So yeah. to present you. Very, very interesting. So, uh, so you went to UK in September, right? So yeah. you came back, and then uh, we are talking about the time frame of six months again, right? So that is where you worked on developing the, these models further, right? Yeah. And then uh, you went back to uh, Middle East. You went to Middle East in April, right, to to uh, present in the fair. Yeah. So, so how was the experience there? What did you learn from there? And there were positives and negatives. Right. So Let's start with negatives. The negatives were uh, always start with the bad news. Yeah. The <laughs> negatives were that we did not have a solution for the web. Right. We did not have a solution for the for Android. We did not have a solution for all the iPads. And we did not even have a payment gateway. So, so in other words, you went to one of the largest educational conference too early. Too early yeah. with just 10 technology that was released. A demo app, yeah. A demo app. Yeah. You went to a conference where there were thousands of people coming in every day. Correct. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> how, how, how did you deal with it? No, but it was good. I made good friends. All right. And uh, again, for a lot of people, they have not seen something like this. So everybody was very excited to be friendly with us. Right. And uh, so there, 
the moment we finished our, our presentation, the former head of Apple Education for Europe, Middle East, Asia, Africa, came and introduced himself, sat down with us for 45 minutes, asking us what we were doing. And he was seated with us, talking, very engaged with the wild people who were swarming around, around him, trying to get a word from him. But he was really, really interested in us and learning more about what we were trying to do. He was advising us what we should do. He was criticizing what we have done. Uh, just, just a little curious here. Are the guys at Apple following you, or is this a thing for everybody else as well? Because wherever you go, it turns out to be a guy from Apple tend to, be, tend to be there. Yeah. So is this but I saw his profile. I saw his profile, and I knew I will, I will talk to him. You know. Right, right, right. And but luckily he uh, so because it was iPad, he was naturally interested. Right, right. So you know? before before you went to the conference, you looked into who else were coming there, and mm. you identified the key potential people yeah. there to network as well, yeah. right? And then luckily for you, he actually reached out yeah. to you, right? But uh, unlucky for me. Uh, I had to let go of a lot of contracts. Right. So there they do a lot of business in these seminars. So there was one school group called Raha, international schools. There was a school group called GEMS. They are actually the biggest education group in the world. And uh, all of them came and they, you know, their disruption uh, manager, uh, I think it was an Indian gentleman, I forgot his name. He also came in, he asked questions. And then they, I could not make a deal with them because they did not have the hardware. Right. And we did not have solutions for Android. So we potentially let go of hundreds of thousands of dollars of contracts right. because we were not ready. Ready for it. Yeah. Right, right. But we made friends. Right. So in there, you launched the application Hologo, right? And I, I saw uh, a lot of people were downloading it. And I, I, in fact, I even saw it featured on Apple App Store. How was the experience? Were you guys ready, ready for that? Were you expecting that this will be this uh, massive hit? So I, uh, actually, Apple has a big agenda to promote AR. Right. My suspicion is that they will launch, uh, uh, now the iPhone is dying. Right. right. Apple is very comfortable at killing their own products. Right. right? So they killed I iPod or iPhone. They are slowly killing the MacBook. You posted a grievance about MacBook recently. Right, right, right. MacBook to promote iPad. Right. So now I think they will release a wearable glass and they will slowly change the phone to a remote control. So the glass will have, you know, the, it will be your computer, yeah. your TV, that's, your everything. That's very futuristic yeah. Iron Man kind, but would yeah. be so great to that, have. That's exact, exactly where they're heading. So what they, have you all heard of Magic Leap? Has everybody heard of Magic Leap? Uh, no, so Magic Leap is also a similar glass that they have launched this year. When they were funded by Google and Alibaba, uh, hundreds and hundreds of millions of dollars, they are valued now at $2 billion. Everybody was so curious about what they were trying to come up with, and they were pressured to release a product. They released their glass this year, but no solutions. So everybody mm. was so disappointed in, uh, they were so hyped, okay, $2 billion company, they are going to come up with hardware, it will be amazing, right? Right, right? But they released it, and they did not have content oh. on it. So, so similar was, for the AR kit. So, so I th Apple is a much smarter company, in my opinion. So what they are doing is, they are getting all developers around the world to develop content in augmented reality three years in advance. And they are powering that with iPhones, they are increasing the AR, uh, technology in the iPhones with AR kit too. Right, right. And they are going to have a massive library of AR applications by the time they launch their, the, wearable, device. their wearable device. Right. So that is why they are really, really eyeing and, you know, sort of keeping a close watch on whoever who is developing augmented reality applications. And education is a area where Apple is quite Focusing focused on, in. Right. So that's why I believe that, you know, they've been uh, I know how close goes. to us and they've given good suggestions. They've invited us to develop a labs. Right. And uh, that's the story. So, yeah. yeah. Could you tell us about how, how was the experience with this app being featured on App Store? Because this was featured in App Store. Then it could, yeah, yeah, because we did not have a pay on gateway. We, want, we did not want to give it a, make a free application because I was spending more than $10,000 a month 
right. on people who are right, right. developing uh, the application, going and traveling and all these things. And um, then when we launched the application, two weeks after we launched the application, we started getting a lot of downloads one night at around 10.30. And then when we did not understand why we were getting so many downloads. And we were getting, at, at that particular day, we got 3,000 downloads in 24 hours. And we were getting so many hits, we had a dedicated verification service that sort of doubled the numbers yeah. and sent the same verification number to two people because it was oversubscribed. Yeah. So that was a bug there. People were getting annoyed and commenting also. And that's when we figured out that Apple had listed this app at number 173 from all the education apps in the world. Right. So that's around 700,000, 800,000 apps. Then they have an algorithm where the more downloads you get, the more ranking that you get, you know? So then we were just refreshing and checking, refreshing and checking. Every single hour we kept going up and up and up and up and up and we ended up going to number 37 in the whole world. And, and while you are having this issue, right? And yeah. because uh, I think just to make it clear, the issue he was having was uh, when you register a number, you receive an OTP, right? Yeah. And then uh, since you are not ready for this much of traffic to come to your app, the same number was being sent to two different people, right? So you are- people got, uh, got issues, yeah. A lot of time. people got yeah. the same code. So while you are having this issue, the app can go in up on the- Yeah, yeah. yeah. And we had demo applications, so they would just download and only see the demo part. Right, right. We did not have the payment at that time. So I had to make a very painful decision to reach out to the Apple guys and tell them, please take it down. And by, by, by yeah. then, when, what was the ranking? 37. 37. So from 170 to it went to 37, and then you have to make this decision where to call Apple and please take my application. Mm. So how, how did you feel about that? I felt like it was the right thing to do. You felt like Yeah, because uh, if, we was, we, if we were at 37, may, a lot of people would have downloaded it and we would have not, uh, they, would have got, they would not have got the experience that we have intended them to right. have <coughs> because it was not fully ready. Right. And they would have gotten bored of the application yes. and they would have just deleted it. Right, right. And so, they will never install it again, right? Yeah, and then when somebody tells them about it later, they'll be like, yeah, I had a bad experience. Yeah, and, and, and this is something I have been reading a lot about because uh, uh, the, the customer, returning the customer is always cheaper than acquiring new customers, right? So mm. for, I think you also concern more about that, right? Yes. Because once if they have a bad experience, they, they are never going to install it again, right? And then they are, they are going to be stuck. So I think it's very smart and brave of you to actually do and take it down, so. So uh, wh what did you do next? So then we started studying the behavior of people who were using it. Right. By, by then, how many users did you have? At that point, we had 50,000. 50,000, right. Now we have 210. 210,000 from all, right? On Hologo, yeah. Hologo, yeah. So, so what was the next step? I mean, uh, uh, th next what we did was we started checking the behavior. So we, st we found out that people who download it, they have, they go through the entire application for one, two weeks, and then user behave, users just stop, stop using Stop it. using yeah. this, yeah. And uh, then a very few people actually use it every, so that's when I realized that, you know, uh, there were a lot of curious people downloading it, and there were people who are really heavily using it. Right. So then we started to get data of uh, email addresses of people who were using it. So we have an active user base of around 14,000 people who are actively engaged in it at the moment with uh, 100, close to 100 experiences. So we were using that data to expand the augmented reality experience library to 500 experiences that we will release in April next year. Right. And uh, we wanted to work on how we get more engagement. And right. that's when we started working on multiplayer augmented reality. Right, right. So that means you and I can take our phones and 
live with the same AR right, experience. Right. And, and we are talking about a very new area here, right? augmented reality. And I, I think even finding talent for augmented reality is very difficult to even develop and work on it. So how, di uh, how did you get the support for, you know, did you get any support from Apple or? Yes. Yes. So yes, they, to they, they took us for an Apple developer lab. In UK right, right. and uh, so just one morning they called you and just invited you. I got an email. I got an email right, asking right. if you would like to join, and then we went there. Right. And right. they 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 were quite and, helpful. And you you didn't reach out to them, right? They just reached out to you and invited you, right? Yeah. Right. Right. So where do you see Hologo now? I mean, uh, you so have right now we know exactly what we have to do. Right. So right now we know that we we. We know what subjects to feature. We know how people have been using it. The people have been using it in ways that we did not even intend. For an example, uh, we had one category that we call journeys. So there you, the phone opens, the camera opens, there's a window. And through the window, you physically go through the, with the phone and then you go into a VR experience. So that was something that we thought, okay, we'll just give as a fun tool, you know. Right, right. But then people who are using it started reaching back to us and saying that before kids who were given tasks for descriptive writing, right, uh, they'll be given a paragraph to read and a picture and say, okay, you write a very creative essay around this, you know, make, it, make go for descriptive writing. Right. But they will write one, two, three paragraphs. But some schools that are using this now uh, send students on virtual journeys to the Great Wall of China. And then when they come back, the kids are writing full pages you know, right. of descriptive right. writing. So we did not intend that uh, function to teach English. We did not even anticipate we'll develop something for English. But the most amount of use is now coming through this application for language development. Right. So for that, we are now uh, partnering with uh, various UN missions across the world and taking 360 videos of um, key global issues like human rights, peace, uh, sustainability. We'll be doing one in Soneva. We'll be doing one of uh, uh, village in Maldives and then we are tying up all of those experience w with a massive uh, uh, you know story bank so they'll be able to read their stories in right. writing that will right. train students in reading hmm. all the 360 journeys will be accompanied with audio so they'll be able to teach students and uh, make them develop listening skills right. and after that they'll have to write critically uh, critical thinking uh, skills will be developed right, right. because we'll pose questions as well. So right, right. Uh, very interesting. And one of the things I see here in the local context is when we are talking about startups or starting up a new business, our ideas are very much limited into this country, right? And I, I, I know for a fact that you are doing everything just from here, right? You are dealing yeah. customers all over the world and yeah. you are just doing it in a small office right here, right? And we also sometimes tend to have this uh, thinking where if we want something very big, we need to have a very big setup and we need to have a super big office with really cool uh, bean bags and stuff like that. So by then only we can really build a good business, right? And then we- I went to Ismail's office. I could work much better there. <laughs> <laughs> and I, no, the reason why I, I, I'm saying this is because I have been to your office as well. Yeah. He does not have any bean bags. I can confirm that. And, but he is dealing with a lot of people. And then, uh, and you started very small as well. Right? Teaching tube was supposed to be here. And then it sort of led to what you are right now, right? So. Uh, why do you think, I mean, should we limit just our ideas or our startup just to this context? So no. do, and, and why do you think not? I mean, why, why do you think, we, do, do you think we have an advantage over everybody else in the world? The reason I'm asking this is because I saw a very interesting uh, video from Jack Ma in 1999, right? So before Ali, Jack Ma started Alibaba, he would say to, he would go back to China and tell the people that the people in the US are doing this certain thing, right? And then they would not even believe him, right? And he will say that if the people in America is doing this, why can't we? Because we are the same people, and we, we actually do work twice as Americans, right? 
And if the, the fact that they could do it there means we could do it as well, right? So I'm sort of relating this to the local context. Yeah, do you think we could even maybe build an Alibaba? Yes. Why, why so? Why do you think so? Uh, because, because number one, to learn how, to, I think the main thing is figuring out a big problem. Right. And uh, if your prob the problem that you figured out, if it's a global problem, right, and everybody is online, and if your solution helps them, right. They would use it, right? Yeah, but, but the scenario here is, right, even from the conversation uh, I heard with you earlier, you have so much plan to expand it to other markets as well, right? Even, for example, you are thinking of uh, going to the bigger markets than uh, Middle East, right? So aren't you afraid that there are bigger companies, giant outs there, that they could maybe build an AR app in just one week, right? Whereas they could replace just your content in one week's work. I mean, they have so much access to the resources, everything they do have. So. Why do you still keep going? I mean, for example, let's say you went to US, right? And Microsoft Education came up with their own AR app, right? Do you think you have an advantage over there? Or why, not, why are you trying to do that? I'm not afraid of that. Reason why why is, not? Reason is, um, the reason is first we started selling a subject for $99. Now we've dropped the entire subscription for $20 per year. Right. So when they buy our subscription, they'll buy it for twenty dollars, and they get Teaching Tube and Hologo both. Yeah. And why I'm not afraid is twenty dollars is enough for somebody to have Microsoft and have Hologo at the same time. Right, right. So you yeah. don't necessarily I see don't them think, as an I, I, I don't think I don't think that if it's priced at this point, they'll be like, no, 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 no. I don't have to buy this. I'll only stick with my. They'll they'll be able to have both. And what, what do you think could be your unique selling point? I mean, why would anybody and use we'll, Hologo? We will be, uh, we, what we are working on at this moment is integrating multiple languages. Right, right. The same heart model will have um, Arabic uh, narrations over it that we are customizing together with uh, the Tatwir Education Technology Corporation of Saudi Arabia. Right. Where they will have it in their own context. We are now working with the... Uh, Indian educators for, to customize it for CBSC, ICSC. Yeah. We are doing the same work uh, with the Korean and Chinese school in Singapore right. that will have Mandarin, Korean, and Chinese. So we, the, the goal here is have something highly relevant to every single market, and at the same time, have a training in place that will be online, developed by Chohan, that will teach teachers how to use this technology in the classroom. Right. So at the moment, I'm not quite worried about other people coming. Uh, it's an uncrowded space hmm. yet at the moment, but I'm sure it will not be the case. True, you know, true. So it, it, we'll try to do our best. Right. I, I, I can see that you genuinely believe in your idea and your business, yeah. right? And, and what you have talked about is fantastic over here. And it's, it's super difficult to run a startup. There are so many people uh, criticizing you for your done because Usually, when you are doing, by definition, startup is uh, something very risky, right? You are doing something different from everything available in the market, right? So it's, it, it's not the same as starting a, just a business. Startup is where you take a risky area and try out something new, right? So when, when you are trying something out new, people usually doesn't share the same, uh, share the same vision as you, right? So then they don't really get it, right? And when people don't get it, they make assumptions, right? So, uh, have you had, well, how do you deal with this kind of experience, right? I, I mean, I, I think if you go and tell somebody you are going to come up with things, there's a high chance that you're going you're gonna to hear that ah, it's never going to work. Num there might be two types of criticisms. Right. Uh, people might criticize what you are trying to do without very thinking too much about it. They'll just say, ah, okay, this sucks, you know, yeah. um, or it will not work. The second type would be people who would have given it some thought and f they'll find a fault and this is why you will not work. Right. So they've cared enough to give a compliment, you right. know, right. and um, they've cared enough to share something that you can actually work on and to improve in your next update or next, uh, uh, next phase of development. Right. So I think that's very important, you know. So I've had conversations with a lot of people now across, uh, I've attended some seminars had conversations with the correct people, you know. So let the correct people criticize. 
And right. you know, I do not want to get uh, a, a criticism from a wholesaler on my education app. Right. Okay, I would want to get their criticism if they had a child who was using it, if they had it. But somebody who is completely not related to it will not know how to yeah. properly criticize what we are doing. So but I'd love to get as much criticism as possible from people who are using, know in using this it. place. And that yeah. can, we can always change, right? Yeah. So if we believe that's yeah. the right thing. Yeah, so in short, just uh, ignore everybody who haven't really given a thought to this because we will always keep, because it's the easiest way, right? Just to say, ah, it's never going to work. So, and, and again, I wanted to relate this to a local uh, contest again. When we are ta talking about startups and, you know, starting up a new business or small business, I, I have come to notice that a lot of people are very, very, very worried about the ideas being stolen, right? They keep their ideas in their pocket and then they never share it, right? And you are here uh, telling us about your journey and what you are going to do next. And even you were very comfortable with uh, sharing a very big idea with me the other day. So I will not share it because I, I honestly don't know how f you feel about this idea sharing thing. So I am okay. Yeah. So <laughs> and uh, so we have this insecurity where the minute uh, we share our idea, it might be stolen and some, someone else might go and do it. So how, how do you, what do you think about that? And what would you tell to the people who are going to start up then? Should they share or should so they? So maybe if you have a very good idea, you might, you, it might not be the best thing to do to share it with somebody who will immediately steal it and go do something, right? right. And do it in a way that is, that may be not the way that you envision to do it. You know, maybe they might spoil the idea also, right? Yeah. So, but uh, what I'm trying to say is, um, having an idea and executing the idea is very two different. So you, you can share your ideas with a lot of people and um, let's say they execute it. You right. still have the chance to execute it better, right? Right, right. So, so in short, if you genuinely believe in your idea, you don't have to worry about it, right? Because yeah. you know for a fact that the other person can't really execute as, in short. So Something that I think a lot of people underestimate is, okay, you have a great idea, but really the work that goes in is into really making something brilliant is you can't, it, it's overwhelming sometimes, you know, because, okay, Hologo, education app for AR, teach and you, you know, but the detail that we have really gone into, you know, we are looking at syllabuses and curriculums from all over the world, you know. Right. We are looking at how each curriculum is different from the next. Right. We are looking at how each and every single model, I'm talking about 567 models today right. that we are working on. Each and every single model will have different labels, different narrations, different languages, and how that will be presented will have to differ from each filter. So let's say a student who will log in from India will have a separate set. Somebody who will log in from Europe will have a separate set. And it has to be relevant to them. Right. And that's the work that you'll have. To, if you put in that work, uh, you will only have to be afraid of somebody who will actually put in that right, amount right. of effort. Right. Right? So, so in short, the, the idea stealer, if I may, would not put the amount of you work that you You shouldn't be afraid of an idea stealer. You yeah. should be afraid of the person who will actually yeah. execute because, it because, better because than the, you. The fact that the, the person who stole the idea didn't have the idea means he can't really do it right. Because yeah. he doesn't really know how to execute. So we're well, very, very impressed to hear that because this is not something we tend to hear a lot here. And um, so, uh, from the stories you have told me, I think uh, they're just saying your network is your net worth, right? So from the mm -hmm. stories you have told us here, I, I can actually see that you have made a lot of contacts, right? And those contacts are actually driving sort of your business, right? So what would you say is most important, you know? Is it the network or, or the money? Go out and make friends. Go out and make friends. So don't worry about the money, make contacts, and then you yeah. will figure out the way, right? Yeah, capital is also a challenge, right? Uh, capital is always a challenge. Of course. But if so you have capital and if you don't have the right network, you are never yeah. going to make it, right? 
So because there's something uh, we tend to hear as well because he did it because he had the money, right? You could have so, so much money in the world and still not being able to do something because you don't know or you don't have the right network to do it, right? In Geneva, I had a very good friend. He right. was a very rich guy, but he didn't have a girlfriend. <laughs> 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 so problem. I don't have yeah, the, with the, money, the guy without the money here, the yeah. girlfriend. So, <laughs> um, so I think I have pretty much covered uh, the most question I wanted to ask you. And now, what would you say to the people here who are, you know, who who want to start a new business or who want to do a startup and who are afraid to go out there? And what would you say to them? I I I would really say if um, before you go ahead, if just ask yourself what problem you're trying to solve, you know, and uh, if you're really solving a big problem, uh, I think chances of, chances of you succeeding would be higher. And um, if you, uh, that would be the biggest thing, I would say. And then next thing would be, you know, um, getting a team that really believes in what you do, number two. Um, you might have a very expert person that you can align with, uh, a person who might have a lot of money that they can give you, but if they really don't believe in what you do, you will eventually end up changing what you develop and that's a very bad thing, I think, you know, yeah. and uh, these, these would be... Right. So, so just one people more... People with the same attitude should work. Just together. one more question based on what you said. You know, running, running a startup is not easy, and, and usually we tend to do it with multiple things as well. There are days that we are, we are really drained, and how, how do you actually deal with this day-to-day? -day? I mean, uh, they're, they're, I'm pretty sure you would also come across scenarios where, okay, I'm done with this, I can't do this anymore, this is too challenging. No. Uh, no? No. All right. I don't come <laughs> yeah. You're definitely different than me, yeah. but uh, that, that's good to hear. Then I think even, even just to share my opinion, I, I, I tend to focus on the bigger picture, right? I mean, there are days that they, you have, even living in Mali is not an easy thing. It's, it's an extreme sport as well. But you have to, I think, sort of uh, focus on the bigger idea there, right? Bigger picture there, right? Which, which could keep you going, right? So. I'm pretty sure you are going that direction as well. So uh, thank you so much, Idam, thank for you. joining yeah. us and sharing your experience and uh, journey of Hologo. And um, um, we will uh, finish the fireside chat from here.